Okay, who else wants to define do programming? Okay, programming is the DNA is 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 it, it's set up where after a while it's it, it's meant to cause the essence of death planned or whatever. There's no, there's, there's, no, there's, no, there's no planned obsolescence program because there's no need for one. Epigenomic changes so it's need all not environment, be it's all environmental. Everything's focused on reproduction. It's all environmental. Yeah, yeah. all of it now. Well, it's because your maintenance systems are only designed to get you to a certain point to procreate. This is like the. That, uh, that's what I mean. So what everyone if thinks of when they say that's the equivalent of them being programmed to I stop. Uh, no. But it's, the, entro it's entropic and it's thermodynamic. There's nothing. There's nothing. All right. Well, okay. Then, then the, designed about it. All right. Then the program. What the program isn't uh, isn't designed to keep going forever. There. That's right. There's and there's so and then there's antagonistic pleiotropy. Not about aging. I, I get it. So I get that. I get that. Against aging, a program I aging that. itself. But but then you can give partial blame, partial credit of the aging of, of the destruction of the body to to the program that's there. No, no, no it's the gaps in the program. Well, it, it, the, the program. It, okay, it's the program isn't designed to live forever. So because of that, we don't live forever. It's not like it's not like the program that's is designed to live forever, and then the environment that's, that's comes in and shuts it down. That's correct. Right. So that, when you when you hear people talk about program dating, right. that's not what they mean. Okay. They mean right. people. They mean the I, idea that we have genes that are genetic machinery that actually yeah, actually kill rather than that we're complete, committing suicide right. on purpose. Yeah, I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Okay. Yeah. All right. I got that. Okay. So it has that yeah. connection to yeah. epigenetics, though. <laughs> Okay, so, well, I mean, so epigenetics, when we talk about epigenetics of cell tissue, in other words, coordinated changes in the gene expression status of a whole bunch of cells, yeah. that is a program. It's got to be a program. It has to happen for some right. reason, right? right. It has right. to happen either because some other gene is being expressed differently and it's like a transcription factor causing that gene, so that just knocks it back one step. Okay. Or else it could be some non-genetic thing, some change of concentration of some small molecule or whatever. Okay. Right? Uh, but again, the program happens for reason of growth and development of brain. And reflection. And what? And reproduction. And, reproduction. and it, it continues on beyond bows that point, beyond the point of sexual maturity and, and end of no. growth. No, Kevin, okay, you can do it. Not really. It's not supposed to. It's only designed to get you to that point. It's not it supposed and then you, and then, to, no. but it starts. Well, that's just because of the redundancy that's built into it. matter for Okay, okay. Well, Kevin didn't get this part. All right. So, <laughs> so, um, so, so let's, let's look at that theory in more in greater, in greater depth. What would the theory predict? The, the theory that you're basically putting forward is that's often called the developmental theory of aging. It says that basically aging is a kind of um, maladaptive, adventitious side effect of evolution's failure to bother to turn off various processes that were important in building the adult organism. That's basically what you're saying, right? Did you use the word adventitious? Yes, I did. Is that all right? I, I, I wouldn't call it adventitious. Why should it be adventitious? I don't understand. Well, just, shall we just say, you know... Advantageous. It wasn't turned off. No, the, 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 um, no, I just meant accidental. I meant not selected uh, for, but not selected okay, against. Thank you. To Turns out I'm yes, not correct. Good. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, well, you can't do so one-handed thing. It's called the developmental theory of aging. Um, basically, there are no clear slam dunk arguments against it from evolutionary theory, but it does make some predictions which have very much not been fulfilled in terms of actual observation and data. In particular, what it suggests is that we would be able to see during any phase of life that we choose to look at some kind of signature of it. Uh, Let's take in particular early adulthood, for whatever, but for, for sake of argument, I'm going to define as between 25 and 45. Right? Our ears and nose get big. Shut up for a second. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, now, cartilage. Now, during that, peri during that period, various things happen that we know happen for non programmed reasons. It's like, you know, the accumulation of molecular stuff that we just don't have enzymes to break down. Beer gut. Uh, that's kind of different. Wait, it's not the age anyway. <laughs> um, it got program. bigger at the age. It's quite <laughs> it's not, uh, big for yourself. Is that what I think? How do you even know that it's not programmed? Aren't wait, we wait, still wait, very no, far no, from let, proving this? Let me finish what I'm saying. Okay, right, sorry. So, sorry. Things, things that are happening there, uh, if we can see that, oh they, that there just aren't any enzymes 
any gene for enzymes that can break something down, then we know that there's no program for not breaking it down, right? <coughs> Maybe. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah, so basically that kind, of log, that. that kind of logic applies to everything that we see, which is essentially the sense, the sense strand that goes on during early adulthood. That's the problem for the developmental theory of aging. We would expect to be able to see something continuing throughout any period of life, including early adulthood, that was happening as a result of genetic activity. So Kevin just made a somewhat um, interesting point, I guess, which was that there are such cases, such as the continued growth of ears and noses and stuff. Yes. Um, but those changes are not, are not actually bad for us. They do not actually have any fit, confer any fitness advantage. Rejected. Um, How do you know they do not confer any disadvantage? Well, okay. <laughs> I'm sure that if I tried really hard, if I waved my hand so hard that my beer would fall in the river, then I could come up with a way in which they could have some kind of disadvantage. But it's certainly a hell of a stretch. Right? Um, so. If we, if we can't find any clear, concrete example of a change during early adulthood which is actually happening as a result of genetic activity and is a contributor to eventual age-related ill health in a normal lifetime, then the developmental theory of aging is looking to be on very shaky ground. Because it would rely then on the proposition that development does turn off properly at the onset of adulthood and then it mysteriously turns, yeah. by some magic wand turns on again later in life. And that is you'd have to identify your magic wand, to put it like that. Well it's 